Hey guys, today we are back in our Windows 11 Proxmox system that I installed earlier in one of the episodes. And today we are going to show you something cool. So, today we are going to create what's known as a virtual hard disk or VHD. Now a VHD is essentially a disk like any commodity USB or external hard drive. But it has a major advantage. You can send it over the network as you can do with any files on your computer. Say you have a text file that says hello world. You can send it over the internet to your friends and family. Well, you can do the same with a virtual hard disk. So not only can you carry it around physically with you by storing it on a physical media, you can also send it over the internet to someone. So without further ado, let's jump right into settings and see how that's done. And while I'm doing that, I will talk through more of the benefits. So you go to system, storage, and disks and volumes. Now under here, you can see two options, create a virtual hard disk, VHD, or create a dev drive. Now today we are going to be creating a VHD, but if you guys want me to talk over how to create a dev drive later on in a future episode, Feel free to let me know down in the comments below, and I'll make that happen. So VHD it is, and let's jump straight into create the VHD. Give the VHD a name, test. Browse for a location to store the VHD, because it's not a physical media where it has a physical NAND chip to store itself on. It is just a virtual thing, so you, you gotta store it somewhere. For a size, we're going to pick 16 gigabytes, like any commodity cheap USB hard drive. For format, we can either choose VHD or VHDX. Now we're going to choose VHDX because VHDX has resiliency to power failure and more benefits equals better. So, you know, VHDX, why not the better one? For hard disk type, we're going to choose dynamically expanding. Now, it means what it literally means. The size expands as you add more files to it. So dynamic expanding, and we're gonna hit create. After creating the disk, your system will ask you to, ah, as you can see right here, the disk is created. Now, the system will ask you to initialize the disk. So we're gonna choose GPT, cause that's the modern standard. Initialize for label. Now we come to the formatting part, and this is like any other formatting. So give it a name, a drive letter, a file system, you can choose either two, it's fine. And a size, well size we already select. It's gonna auto populate again, and we're not gonna bother with it. For advanced, you can choose to have a folder path to mount the drive to later on when it's created or not, or just mount it to the default location, which is on your local drive, by your this PC option. You can also choose to enable here file and folder compression, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's click format. Even though File Explorer didn't like what I've just done there, it's fine. You can see that the test drive F is in TFS and if we open it up if we mount it from here you can see it shows up in my file explorer just like any other external drive you can eject it and it unmount itself you can double click to mount it back and here it is again let's create some stuff in it a text file hello oh. Well, hello world, save, close, close, come on, close, save, yes. Oh my god. Oh, great, I created two. Whatever, um, let's create an image named image. And I'm not gonna bother editing the image for now. So we're just going to close it. No, actually, you know what? We're going to eject it just like we eject a USB. And just like a USB, 
files stay on there the next time you mount it. Especially for this video, I've installed Crystal Disk Mark. And now comes the second benefit, second major benefit to using a virtual disk. Now you can see that I've selected my drive F, that's the drive I mounted as the test drive test. Where is it? Yes, here it is. So because it is virtual and it is mounted on my local disk, it has the speed of my local disk because a virtual drive doesn't have a theoretical limit to its speed. It doesn't have a theoretical maximum, nor does it have a theoretical minimum speed. So it can be as fast as your local storage or any other storage you store on. So as a base test, we're going to test our C drive and see how fast it is. And later we're going to test the F drive to see how similarly it performs or dissimilarly. All right, the test is finished. As you can see, well, this is how my drive performed. This is how my C drive performed. And if we take a look at this PC here, you can see my C drive is where all my files are at and where the system is running on. So let's proceed to test the test drive F. Remember the test drive F is the one that we mounted the test volume. And it has all three of the files that we created. All right, let's select F and do a test. You know what? Actually, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to open snipping tool and then snip this for future reference. All right. And now we're going to proceed with the test. All right. So all right, so the test is done. Now let me pull up the screenshot that we just, oh no, not, not this. Be small. All right. So as you can see, there is still a difference. Yes, but the difference is quite small. If you look at the random 4K rise, it's 310.31. That's 317.36. And the two figures here are pretty similar too. All this goes to say that run-to-run -run variant aside and all that kind of stuff aside, the performance of this virtual disk is critically dependent on the performance of the drive that it's mounted to. So the discrepancy here can be explained by either run-to-run -run variant or simply because my, uh, my M.2 disk ran out of cache, for example. But the performance penalty is not that much, as you can see. All right, let's close this up. And now we're going to showcase something really neat. So if you if you don't want the performance of your virtual disk to be throttled by your system drive, you can also choose to mount it on another drive. So for example, I've got this, I've got this WD passport here. And we're just going to move the test volume that we just ejected from this system onto the external drive that I plugged in. So we have the test drive here, the virtual disk, and we're just going to double click to mount it. Now, because it's no longer on our current system drive, it's on the new volume drive. If we double click it, it'll automatically mount to the new volume drive instead of my local drive. So now you can see all the files are still here, just like any commodity USB storage. But now we're going to fire up Crystal Disk Mark again. And this time we're going to run it first on my password drive. Okay, now the test is done, and I'm tool and snip 
a screenshot of this result. And now we're gonna test our drive F, the test drive that we mounted to new volume. Once again, it is stored in new volume. So once you double click it, it will automatically mount, it will automatically mount to the drive it's stored on new volume. So now that we know the speed of the no new volume, it should theoretically limit the speed of our virtual disk. But let's have a test and make sure. All right, the test is done. Now, once again, let's open up the results from last time. And as you can tell, it's incredibly similar. That's because, well, it was mounted to the drive new volume. It's essentially stored on the drive G, which is not very surprising if you look at the results. So 452, we have 451. 364, we have 361. And similarly for the other results, they are essentially the same. All right. So now that we are sure that this performs similarly to its host drives, why is this important? Well, because for a commodity USB hard drive, you can't really, you can't really throttle the performance or make it perform better. And you can't really send it over the internet. In fact, it is not even a file. It is just a physical disk that you can carry around. But this is a file that we can easily transfer between disks. I can put it anywhere I want. And I can even send it over the internet as I send any file to my friends or whatever. I haven't ejected the disk, so, you know, uh, typical awkward moment. You have to eject the disk before you can send it over to anyone or modify the original disk. And if you want to make copies of the disk, that's also possible. You can just simply copy it over. It can be infinitely duplicated, just like files on a USB drive, but without the limitation being files. I can straight up copy the whole drive so that's it for vhd now vhd is uh, personally speaking i think it's a really cool technology and it can eliminate the need for me to carry around you know 30 different usbs if i want to store 30 different kinds of files i can just have 30 of the vhd files and then have it with me on my nas at all times which is infinitely more convenient than manually plugging in 30 different drives to my computer every time I want to access those files. So, I hope you guys found this episode helpful. If you did, please drop a like and hit that subscribe button. See you again soon. Goodbye for now.